Hello and welcome to today's wonderful interview with Janet Bentley. Janet Bentley is participating in our We Choose to Thrive interview series hosted by the woman I love. Listen to Janet's amazing story of survival and the will to not just survive but thrive. Janet, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking this time to be with us today. I am a survivor of childhood sexual, emotional, religious, and physical abuse. Throughout my life, I was molested by my father at the age of four. It continued on, and when I was nine, I was I was raped in front of my father by his drug dealer as a payment, and it continued. Um, everywhere I seemed to go um, to escape, I seemed to find more abuse. Um, I attended a church. Um, I ended up being raped by a member, uh, a man, member of the church that I attended, which resulted in a pregnancy and an abortion. And basically, my whole, my whole life was kind of in an atmosphere of squalor, abuse, drug addiction, alcoholism, and suicide. It seems like sometimes when we've grown up into this kind of environment, we attract the same things to our lives. The points, that's what, what happens. And I want our listeners to understand that many times when we're, especially when we've had this happen to us as a child, that's what we're familiar with. That's what we know. Yeah, that, that's, that's very true. And I, I think probably that is why I ended up in some of the situations I ended up in not in any way saying that it was my fault or anything, but like you say, when you're in that atmosphere, you don't know anything else. And I think, you know, it ends up being the thing you're, you're most comfortable with. It takes a lot of years to understand our true essences and the, the real person that we are deep inside, especially when we've had no taste of anything else. Exactly. Exactly. Janet, where are you now in your healing process? You know, you look, you have a beautiful glow about you. You're, you, I know you've done, we've talked before, and I know you've done a lot of work for yourself to come into the healing and now thriving process. So where are you right now? Well, it's been about a year and a half since I basically admitted myself into a residential rehab called The Meadows. Um, I had been in many um, treatment centers before that dealt with the depression and the symptoms. This was the first place that dealt head on with the trauma. The, the deep stuff that was there causing so much of the disruption and the, the chaos in my life without even realizing it. So this has been probably one of the toughest years of my life, but also the most rewarding. Is that the most healing thing that you've done for yourself? I think it is. It was the first big thing I had ever done. I believe coming out of there, I had learned so many tools and so much information about how trauma works on the brain and how it is possible to repair some of those neuron pathways that were put into my brain for, from such a young age to actually, to be honest, I wouldn't have changed a thing in my past because it all led me to this moment. It, it led me to deal with it. It led me to becoming a person that forgives for my own benefit um, everything that's happened to me because that's the only way forward. And in doing that, it's allowed me to be freer to give back, to share my story, which is something I've only been brave enough to do perhaps maybe the last six months publicly. That is such a key because I'm celebrating my 60th birthday this month and I'm just now having the courage to speak up. Yes. And it really doesn't matter. I've met young women, women that have been in their 20s and 30s when they speak up and I wish I had been among them. But the fact is that we're speaking now. And I think our, our world has changed a lot, giving people, yes. the younger ones, more options and more awareness. And that's what this is all about, is we want to create that awareness. Yeah. So would you say you suffered mostly from low self-esteem? Um, yes, I suffered. What's really ironic is I went through so many years of therapy and treatment for the depression. Um, prior to the Meadows, a therapist that I was seeing at the time introduced 
the idea of shame and how it affects you mm -hmm. and how it it's toxic that that changed my life too that that was like oh my gosh this is why i withdraw this is why i shut down this is why i go into this alone place because i'm filled with shame that was a, a really important message to me i found a graphic with a girl in sunglasses and one eye on the sunglasses said the shame that they don't see the shame that they don't know and it was so touching because in our healing process, when we understand the shame, when we understand the path to loving ourselves and the forgiveness and the forgiving we do for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. You went to the meadows. Where is the meadows if, if somebody want, was to want to check that out and you felt like they needed some sort of help? Right. It, I, I could not ever recommend it enough. It's in Wickenburg, Arizona. Um, it's a state-of-the-art facility. They have everything available to treat the trauma with um, work with survivor workshops, with sharing your story in a safe place, to a brain spa where you can go and actually learn how to retrain your brain. Um, and a key element in that whole experience was loving yourself, was accepting what happened and loving yourself despite it because I don't think we realize how much we do distract ourselves. It's a self, a self loathing. Yes, exactly. So what words of wisdom would you have to offer to somebody just starting down this path of healing, no matter what age they are? What words of wisdom would you share? Well, that's interesting that you say about the age because that's the first thing I think I would say. I was in my 50s. I'm 56 now, and I felt like I was past the point where it would even be worth dealing with this stuff. But it's not. It, it, you know, no matter what age you are, you need to get into a group, get into a safe place, anybody that you can start to share your story so you don't feel alone. That, that to me is the first thing. The second thing is that to, to realize that you can heal that it, it doesn't matter how bad your trauma's been, there are ways to heal, tools to help you heal, and there is support, support there for you. Very good. So your life now, now that you've gone through this, are you feeling joyful? Are you feeling uh, like you're, you've got every reason to live and can contribute to our world? I absolutely do. I. I'm on the board of an organization that works tirelessly to prevent childhood sexual abuse. I have written my story. I have giving back. That means everything to me. Mm -hmm. It's what gives what happened to me a purpose. And I, I also don't want people to think that there's still not ups and downs. I walked out of the meadows thinking I could, you know, change the world and I still have that inside of me but I have waves that what happened to me will never go away and although I can heal from it sometimes you have low periods but the difference is I can get back up there are triggers it, absolutely lots of triggers there's triggers there's things that happen that sometimes will just come back and slap you upside the head exactly but it's what we do about it how long do we stay absolutely up? there there are things you can do yeah and I'm a perfect example of that. Uh, so you have you published your book? No, I have not. It's it's ready to be looked at. I've had a couple people read it and are really interested in it. Seeing it published, but yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of in that process. Very right. good. Do you say that the telling of your story by in by putting it in writing has been had an impact of healing for you? Oh my gosh. It, it's it's funny, I think it's like doing a year of EMDR, <laughs> it was doing it in a way that was so healing. And I can actually talk about some of it now without, I, I've processed it as I wrote it. So it's yes. very healing. Well, on behalf of those who will be watching this series, we choose to thrive. And it's our voices rising in unison to, to give a message of hope that we can heal, we can thrive in our tools, that we can have at our disposal. Thank you for having the courage 
to be a part of this and just know that it, it makes such a big difference because it's by our collective sharing that we will help to change our world and both of us and all those others that are volunteered to be on this project, we can be a force for change in our world and that's what we're doing. One step at a time. <laughs> well, I, I thank you very, very much for letting me be part of it for another avenue to share and hopefully help others in the same situation. Thank you very much. And before we close this, what organizations are you working with to you know, share your message? I'm working with SAFE. Um, it's a nonprofit, um, Sexual Abuse um, Forever Ended. I also work with Darkness to Light which is a great organization that spreads awareness of childhood sexual abuse. I'm a, fa a facilitator trained to give the stewards of children's training, which teaches all about that. I'm in the baby steps of forming a nonprofit of my own called Show Up for Children. Yeah, stuff, stuff like that. Wonderful <laughs> resources. So this is a warm thank you to Janet Bentley for this fabulous interview, We Choose to Thrive. If you know of someone that could benefit from listening to our We Choose to Thrive series, this is very important that we would love for you to share it. We, we feel that there are many people out there that have um, experienced this massive epidemic of the sadness that comes from childhood sexual abuse. It pervades our lives for a very long time. And our goal is to create awareness and to show that there is a way to heal and that we can thrive in our lives. Thank you.